Clancy's has gone missing. I had to go over there are no windows, so I could get the chip out, like you said. There is no chip. What? There you have it. Aliens confirmed. Very excited to be reacting to House MD Season 3, Episode 2, Cain and Abel. On this channel, we are reacting to all 177 House videos. This would be Episode 66. Let's see if I can get the diagnosis before House does as a doctor working in London. What if they come to get me again? Nobody is coming to get you. Okay, go to bed. I guess he's already up. Uh, he's not down here. Whatever you want, this is not funny. Friends. This poor kid is clearly struggling way more than the usual boogeyman under the bed or monster in the garden fears. Seems like he fell out from his room and onto the grass. Thankfully, it was a soft landing because if it was concrete, then this would be a very different case. They also show that he had some bleeding from the back passage. How could that be connected? First, we need to know what caused the bleeding and that might help identify the links. The most common cause would be a severe diarrheal illness like Shigella, Salmonella, Campylobacter, or Entamoeba histolytica. He could have contracted them through contaminated water, food, or contact with other infected people. When you have a severe diarrheal illness like that, you can lose salts through your gut, leading to the levels in your blood dropping. That and generally being unwell can lead to something called delirium, where you have a change in mental state, confusion, and even hallucinations as a response to a medical condition. That is the most likely cause if this happened in real life, but this is house. So I'm sure they're gonna find a way to make it some kind of rare cancer that originated from his toenail. Let's find out. How's your leg? You seem to be favoring your left side. Like the ketamine treatment might not stick. Or maybe we've made him depressed because we're lying to him. He got lucky. There was no medical... He was right. If you haven't seen the previous episode, then I'll give you a quick rundown. House ended up curing a patient with a totally insane diagnosis and didn't know about it since Cody told him no as he'd done so many unnecessary tests up until that point. Then she went behind his back and tested House's theory by treating the patient. The patient then not only got better, but stood up for the first time in the 10 years. Cuddy then didn't want to tell House because they thought he just got lucky. Something then doesn't quite add up. You see, in season one, Wilson was willing to sacrifice his career to defend House against Vogler. And just a few episodes ago, he went against Cuddy to make sure House was stuck in a lift with a patient so he could search for a tick. Now, Wilson's holding back that House got an answer right. In my experience though, withholding the truth is never a good idea. It always comes out in the end, especially when the person you're hiding it from has the combined IQ of Einstein and chat GPT. Why am I challenging him again? Kid is a product of an in vitro fertilization pregnancy. I think we should talk to the kid in case he's telling the truth. Not arrogant enough to think that of the 50 billion galaxies that we're the only ones with life. No. But I'm guessing we're the only ones who like shoving things through our back doors. Ah, I forgot to include actual alien abduction and probing in the possible causes. Must have missed that lecture. So the big question here is, do aliens exist? To answer that, we need to know what it actually takes to sustain life. All we know about that is from Earth, which is the right distance from the sun, has protection from harmful radiation with a magnetic field, is kept warm by our atmosphere, and we have the building blocks of life, which include water and carbon. There's nothing within our solar system that matches those characteristics, but there are some very interesting contenders out there, especially the ones orbiting a star named TRAPPIST-1. The constellation was actually discovered around 2017, and there was a lot of excitement as the constellation had the most planets within the star's habitable zone. Fast forward to March this year though, and we find that the planet closest to the star, TRAPPIST-1b, has no atmosphere, so is unlikely to support life. That is the closest star, however, and so that came as no surprise since it wasn't technically in the star's habitable zone. The star in that system that has the most potential is called TRAPPIST-1d, which likely has a surface temperature similar to Earth, even though one year only lasts four Earth days. 
due to TRAPPIST-1 being 10 times smaller than the Sun. Compared to Earth, it has a 0.91 similarity index, which is very high since one is basically exactly the same planet as Earth. That's also just exploring the planets that are within about 50 light years of Earth. Imagine what we'd find if we checked the entire universe. To quote the famous American astronomer Carl Sagan, the universe is a pretty big place. If it's just us, then it's an awful waste of space. So a question for you smart people, do aliens exist? Answers down below. It was the hallucination. It's having nightmares, which just leaves us with one symptom, the bloody tuchus. Prepping for endoscopies from above and below. Upper and lower endoscopies were clean. So it's a simple bleeding disorder. I'm not, blood tests were all normal. And he clotted in six minutes. So you're saying Chase did screw up. The guy points to minutes. Maybe you got it mixed up. Oh, snap. Wow, seems like Foreman is well and truly recovering from having a lethal amoebic brain infection. Both Chase and Foreman did bleeding time tests and Chase got 6 minutes, which was normal, and Foreman got 25 minutes, which is very prolonged. House thinks Chase was wrong, but what if they're both right? One thing that hasn't been mentioned yet either was that the patient is an IVF baby. How could that be relevant to the bleeding? Well, we know IVF is actually associated with higher risks of leukemia in childhood. Childhood, which is a rare blood cancer, the risk can actually be almost double that of a baby that's conceived naturally. Leukemia could explain all of the patient's symptoms as well. So what is leukemia and how could it make this patient sick? Believe it or not, our blood cells are constantly renewing themselves and after just three months, all the red blood cells in your body may look the same but are entirely different. That's because the production factory called the bone marrow is grinding away to get those juicy cells out. What happens though when that marrow starts fighting for the wrong team? It starts producing pathological blood cells that can overgrow and invade the marrow in an unregulated way, suppressing the production from other healthy parts of the marrow. That leads to reduced platelets, red cells, and white cells, which we call pancytopenia. If this patient's platelets were low, that could cause a prolonged bleeding time and a susceptibility to infection from the lack of white cells, which could explain the hallucinations. To diagnose it, you'd initially want to do a blood film and then a bone marrow biopsy, so leukemia is definitely going to be my first diagnostic guess. Clancy's has gone missing. I had to go over there are no windows so I could get the chip out, like you said. There is no chip. What? There you have it, aliens confirmed. The patient earlier said to Chase that he felt this chip in the back of his neck and Chase fed into it by pretending to get rid of it. He was just feeding into the patient's delusions by doing that, making the patient act on it. The first rule of psychiatry is to explore delusions not reinforce them. I once had a 27 year old patient come into my clinic saying that she saw superheroes landing from the sky. When they hit the ground, it started shaking and cracking the floor. When someone presents like that, it's important to check a few things. First, do they have insight that what they're seeing isn't real? Second, have they taken any drugs recently? Third, do the things they see or hear ask them to do anything? Fourth, have they had any thoughts of harming themselves or others? These are really important to assess risks as patients with psychiatric conditions are particularly vulnerable to self-harm, which is a real risk. Now what on earth, or not earth, is going on? The lab cannot identify the metal. Really? No, you idiot, it's titanium, like from a surgical pen. You're okay. I was one of your doctors. I, I want to have sex with my wife. Dr. Cuddy. He needs to be less reckless. You know this is affecting him, don't you? Just let me run a PET scan to see if it's sensing pain. If it's not, the leg pain is my fault and I will tell him the truth. So much to go through. Cuddy feels there are two options why House's pain is worse, psychological or physical. If it's psychological, then the stress of getting a case wrong is opening the pain gate and making his perception of pain worse, even though the ketamine is still working. The other option that Cuddy's trying to do that definitely wouldn't work is scanning the brain to see if it's sensing real physical pain rather than psychological. The truth is though, the brain can't tell the difference between physical and functional pain. That's why conditions which don't 
have a clear physical cause like fibromyalgia, for example, are still so damn painful. In reality, then doing a PET scan to see if his pain centers light up like a firefly in Lycra will give you nothing but an empty wallet. Also, this kid had a fractured arm and a titanium plate inserted that was removed six months after, and now the team is saying it somehow teleported into his neck. Something doesn't add up. Not weird. It's just that weird things keep happening to me. Pulmonary edema, stage two hypertensive crisis. <laughs> Sign him on an IV drip of sodium nitroprusside. Chase identified a high blood pressure in 3.2 seconds. Have you seen how long it takes to detect a blood pressure? Longer than foreplay. The only way you can get reading faster is an arterial line, which this patient doesn't have. Either way, what could cause this patient's blood pressure to spike so suddenly, along with the alternating bleeding? An incredible diagnosis here would be something called carcinoid syndrome. It's a tumor in the gastrointestinal system that releases serotonin and can cause the levels to spike. It can also cause gastrointestinal bleeds and hallucinations in rare cases. In distant systems, though, it usually causes the blood to clot rather than bleed though, which doesn't quite make sense. You could diagnose it using a test called the 5IAA test in the urine by collecting over 24 hours. That would be an insane diagnosis, rare and spicy. Second diagnostic guess. It is a bleeding disorder. Clancy tested positive for von Willebrand. He's clotting right now and he's in hypertensive crisis. Maybe the two are related. What's the differential for a seven-year-old boy suffering multiple hypertensive crises? We think the problem is in your son's heart. He has a bleeding disorder. That's a huge piece of the puzzle. So he's naturally prone to bleed. And then during the crisis episodes, this tumor leading to carcinoid syndrome could start spitting out serotonin if he has it. That then causes his blood pressure to spike, blood to be prone to clotting, him to get diarrhea and neuropsychiatric symptoms that can do strange things to people like making them see aliens or spending $66 on a goop jade egg to get a free vaginal infection. So this carcinoid syndrome along with the bleeding disorder could explain everything, very much liking this theory. They're suspecting that his heart is causing the high blood pressure as some kind of congenital heart disease or hypertrophic cardiomyopathy could give you an indication. You would do an easy trace of the heart first though, before shoving a camera down his throat to look at it, which is what they want to do. Risky and dangerous offer business trips, not hospitals. If you like taking these mad rides that are these house episodes with me, then check out the channel membership. You get priority access to new videos, access to exclusive polls, and to suggest another episode and season for me to react to. The first 30 members get a chance to win a one hour, one on one tutor session with me with the topic of your choice. We currently have 26 members with just four spots left. So press join to secure your spot. I'll keep working tirelessly to make it worth your while. It's important he knows you believe in him, even if you don't. It's clean. His heart isn't the problem. We're gonna need a bigger boat. Right there. Left side, no movement. Go get me those myocytes. I wanna talk to them in my office. Did they just break into an IMAX to look at an Echo? You know they would have had to rent that whole cinema just for that one take. Although Hugh Laurie probably owns a cinema by this point as he's making half a million dollars per episode. Now what House is mentioning here with the parts of the heart that aren't moving is what we call a regional wall motion abnormality. Heart muscle's job is to contract with every beat and this area isn't meaning that there could be a problem there. The most likely cause overall would be a heart attack, but in a seven year old child, especially with extreme stress, it could be something called broken heart syndrome. Triggers are an extremely stressful event like the death of a family member, a heated argument, severe financial loss, or even something unexpected like winning the lottery. During times like this, the body floods your system with stress hormones and in a small percentage of people that can stun part of the heart, causing it to stop. It would link in nicely with the Cain and Abel name of the episode as well. As the biblical story goes, both Cain and Abel were Adam and Eve's children. They were farmers and each brought a sacrifice to God, but God thought Abel's was better. Cain was devastated and in his rage, he killed Abel and as a result was punished by God to forever be a wanderer and never be able to farm again. Could it be then that the stress the parents are causing their child by not believing him will be retaliated by the curse of this child being unwell? Poetic for sure. 
What's going on with the leg? First, tell me what's going on with the boobs. I want to get a PET scan of your brain. It's to me like those puppies are going out of the dairy business. Stars. I'm not pregnant. I thought that my leg was deteriorating. Don't you think I want to take steps to prevent that? Okay. House knows his leg is getting worse as he started the Vicodin again at the beginning of the episode. So why does he want to keep it private? Maybe the idea of using the cane again is too much to bear and he's in denial. Maybe people create false realities using self-deception because the truth is too hard to face. Like the alcoholic who thinks their drinking is under control, the wife who believes her husband will change after multiple affairs, or the colleague who thinks that everyone succeeding around them is because of ruthlessness, deceit, or other unfair circumstances. In each of those situations, there is a painful truth hidden on the other side of the manufactured thin veil. I'm not in control of my drinking. My husband will never change and I need to go out on my own. I am actually not providing as much value as my colleagues around me. In each circumstance though, the material situation never improves until the person faces the painful facts of the situation. It's just as philosopher Oliver Berkman states in his international bestseller book, 4,000 Weeks, that you're always either in a state of uncomfortable enlargement or comfortable diminishment. The comfortable or easy option generally never serves you well in the long term. I hope House takes head of that and faces the fact that his leg isn't in great shape. Here's Clancy's DNA, and here's the DNA from that piece of his heart we just biopsied. That is impossible. Alien DNA. Chase has been waiting his entire life for this moment. Those two words had enough substance to be a whole A4 page. The head tilt, the quick glance of a house, then back at the screen, the subtle smile. What a masterpiece. So how can a DNA from someone's heart be different to the rest of their body? You see, every cell in your body has a nucleus, which is where DNA is stored, and it has a copy of your entire sequence of DNA. It's like a master code for your cells with the information to recreate your whole body. Some bits of code aren't needed for certain cells though, and they can switch on and off different genes which we call selective expression. That's how the same code can make a red blood cell, a neuron, and every cell type all at once. This isn't that though, this is a completely different code. The answer could only be one thing, and my third and final diagnostic guess genetic mosaicism. We know that being an IVF baby puts you more at risk for mutations if those happen early in life, when you're just an embryo of eight or 16 cells, then the mutation can create something called mosaicism. That means one eighth or one sixteenth of your cells can have totally different DNA expression to the others. That could explain why this batch of cells is different to all the others and why they're defective as well. We all have some degree of mosaicism systems in our bodies, but many of the mutations are tiny and inconsequential, so we don't ever notice it. Some people actually have this related to a pigment in their skin, which can lead to an almost zebra-like appearance. If this is right, that would be one of the best diagnoses and themes in the whole series. What if we take the heart cells with the bad DNA and we tag them, and we flush it throughout a system, and the similar cells light up like light bulbs? Okay, let's do that clump of affected cells in the bone marrow of the femur. Explains the intermittent bleeding disorder. We miss some affected cells in his heart. Explains the continuing hypertensive issues. There's the reason for him needing glasses. Apparently it's a symptom. Once the affected areas are removed, his normal tissue will step back in and do its job. I'm gonna insert a needle through the pupil and get rid of the abnormal cells in the retina. Wow, so they managed to do a PET scan to locate all the abnormal tissue, and some of it was in his bone marrow, which I thought would be the case from my first leukemia theory. The heart and retinal cells have thrown me off a little bit though, wasn't expecting that. Also, it seems like they're saying that they can just get rid of the cells and all will be nice and dandy again, but in real life, that's definitely not the case. For them to be causing a problem in the first place, the area needs to be significant. You can imagine if you freeze off a big chunk of your heart, you don't exactly open up shop for candy and UFOs again the next day. There would be a long rehabilitation period as cells are slow. I understand why they do it quickly though, as it wouldn't be such an interesting program if we spend the whole episode watching him play cat and fashion tinfoil hats. Can you see my face? Yeah, it's clear. You're going home tomorrow. How can you be so sure it isn't just a sore muscle? To my leg. You're not always right, House. 
You've proven that lately. You're not always right, House. You've proven that lately. Wilson is about as much of a friend right now as George Bush Jr. to Saddam Hussein. House has started a whole self-destructive cycle here, trying to rehab his leg when there's nothing to rehab. Look, I'm the first one to send someone to physio because it works wonders. But when you've got a massive chunk of your thigh missing, then it's got about as much chance of growing back as Mia Khalifa's virginity. By overexerting himself like that, it's likely he'll just end up injuring the weaker muscle that's left, which has to compensate for the lost tissue. That just make the pain worse. If I were house and my friends did this to me, I would be so angry. What's happening to him? He's seizing. What if the tag just doesn't work in his brain? Send the kid home. It's more probable that his remaining symptoms are just a nightmare. Just a nightmare? Just a nightmare. Nightmares don't cause people to seize and fall out of their window house. What I find unusual now is that they've removed the tissue, but still no diagnosis. Did they have to sell their microscope to pay for house's legal fees? Every time we remove tissue, especially if it's dangerous tissue like this, then we send it to the lab for analysis. It does take time to grow and analyze the cells, but you'd probably want to know that the patient's stable before sending the kid to his second floor ET magnet again. Just to tell the man already, nobody likes cautious house. House, you just giving up on this kid? You gotta know when to stop. You just keep on going until you come up with something so insane that it's usually right. He had Addison's. Your last patient, you were right. Oh, your mommy's in such trouble. That's why she had to. Oh, this is getting spicy. House has his mojo back and we have a new clue. We know that this patient was an IVF baby, so maybe the father we see isn't the actual dad. Maybe his sperm weren't exactly Phelps swimmers, so mommy needed to get a little help from the bank, and I don't mean HSBC. What could that mean though for our kid? The difficult part is he's getting seizures that are producing these odd experiences, which is classically a temporal lobe sign, but epilepsy in that area of the brain isn't directly associated with any genes from any seizure syndromes. Okay, so here's a mad theory then. What if during the IVF process, the actual dad and his defective sperm ended up getting mixed with the bank dad and both sperm fertilized the egg all at once. Only one could live on and dominate like Cain and Abel. Usually that would make semi-identical twins, but what if one of them didn't survive an implant? Then you would have a mixture of both sperm in one baby. It was only discovered back in the early 2000s when a twin DNA for a boy-girl baby set was compared and found the mother's DNA was an exact match between the siblings, but the father was only 50% similar, which has never been picked up before. If that's right though, then I'll be so annoyed because I'm officially out of diagnostic guesses. If I'm wrong though, I'll be even more annoyed. Lose, lose. How does one person end up with two different sets of DNA? What if he's two persons? Two brothers get stuck sharing. There's no bunk bed, so they cuddle up to keep warm. It's called chimerism. Chimerism? Damn, I can't believe I didn't get this one. There was actually a case of this recently where a singer called Taylor Moule had this, causing a birthmark on her abdomen. She essentially absorbed her twin in the womb. Each chimera is unique with a different outlook depending on how well combined the DNA sets are. You could have just two different colored eyes or some skin pigment, or be stuck between two sexes if the twin was a different gender, or even have a full-blown autoimmune disease when one twin rejects the other. It's an insanely rare diagnosis though, as less than 100 cases have ever been recorded. Question for you smart people, if a human can fuse with a human, could they fuse with an animal? Answers down below. If we induce an alien abduction, the foreign DNA has got to be in a portion of your son's brain that makes him believe that he's being abducted. And your son's neurons will light up and his brother's cells will remain dark. I'm talking about really cool brain surgery. No! Here they come. I think. They're gonna take you, torture you. You'll never see your parents again. You got them. 
Okay, the production value here is incredible, but there is no way that this is possible. Even if they found these foreign cells and destroyed them, the brother cells would be so finely intertwined with the patients that there'd be no way of physically just attacking the invaded ones. You would take out a ton of residual function by doing this. Not to mention though, that none of the cases of chimerism have had symptoms like this. In ancient Greek mythology though, the chimera is a prominent figure, although it's usually a lion mixed with a serpent that can breathe fire. It was also killed by a flying horse named Pegasus. This was all written by a guy named Homer. Seems like he had quite an active imagination. Close man. But if we told you the truth, you'd think you were God. God doesn't limp. I missed the diagnosis on this one, but the character development, the story, the diagnosis, how it all linked together was masterful. On a less pleasant note though, we've seen the idea of how a god complex can be so dangerous among a medical professional recently and how it can impact patients. Lucy Letby, the tiny baby intensive care nurse who murdered seven babies, thought she could just take the lives of such innocent defenseless beings while being unchecked. All while doctors who suspected her were silenced by hospital bosses and made to apologize to her as she did it. It's so hard to identify these kinds of killers as well since they seem to be top of their class, high functioning and be able to cover their tracks to divert suspicion. Glad to see that the judge sentenced Lucy Letby to seven life sentences without the option to shorten and she will spend the rest of her life in jail for all those families that she destroyed through her actions. May those innocent babies rest in peace after they fought for their little lives. On a brighter note, it seems like House has been helped to accept the reality now. He knew he was right about the patient. Great episode, 8.5 out of 10 entertainment. Say four out of 10 accuracy, the eight out of 10 diagnosis. You have to watch the previous one though when a disabled man walks again thanks to the discovery.